What's up, everybody? When you go to sell your house, you obviously want to make the most money. So you may be thinking, what can you do to your house to upgrade it right before you go on the market? You want to be smart in your upgrades and get the most bang for your buck. The mistakes that I see are either people doing really cheap upgrades, and I put upgrades in quote because they really look terrible, or really expensive upgrades right before you go on the market where you're never going to get your money back. I mean, if you're gonna completely renovate your kitchen and bathrooms, for example, you should do it years before you decide to sell. So you could at least enjoy it for a while before you pass it on to that next owner. And not all upgrades are created equal. You could have two houses, the exact same beautiful renovated kitchen, but one of them has a nice backyard and a two car garage and the other one doesn't, the houses will sell for significantly different prices, even with that same exact kitchen. So be mindful of what your house looks like compared to similar homes. Really make it apples to apples. You want to make sure you get the highest ROI return on investment before you spend tons of money that you're just never gonna see again. So let's go through the upgrades that you should avoid when selling your home because you will never get all that money back. Let's dive right in. Now, there are certain things that you should do to your home regardless if it doesn't have as nice a backyard or garage as your neighbor to get the most value. So let's go through them now quickly and then we'll get to the upgrades that you should avoid. Number one, paint. Painting your home by far will get you the most bang for your buck. Does this mean you have to paint every room? Probably not. Do a walkthrough. Look at the walls and the ceilings and even better, do it with a realtor who has a fresh set of eyes. If certain rooms are painted dark, like my teenage sons, you may want to lighten them up because dark walls look like small rooms. A new buyer just may not have the same taste as you. I don't think any buyers would have the same taste as my son, for example. So you want to make it the more neutral, the better. Also, if there are a lot of pictures and other stuff up on the walls, you may want to consider painting that room so then you can cover all those holes while you repaint it. Something to be aware of is that if each room on the main level is painted a different color, it will create the illusion of a choppy floor plan without even moving the walls. You want a clean look. So all the rooms on the main level should be painted the same color, light and bright with a contrast to the trim. Don't forget about the trim. The trendy colors today are still a warmer, lighter gray, like a Balboa Mist or a Revere Pewter by Benjamin Moore. Or if you want something lighter, take a look at Egret White by Sherman Williams. It's a really nice white. Remember, you're selling your home. This is not about you, at least not the aesthetic part of it. The money that you're gonna get, that's all yours. And with these tips, you'll get a clean looking flow. Let's move on to floors and carpets. If your carpet isn't too old, try getting it professionally cleaned and stretched possibly before you decide to replace it. Now, if it is old and it looks terrible, I do always recommend replacing the carpet because it's just not that expensive. And with the fresh paint, it'll give your house a clean, updated look. And here's the trick if you do decide to replace your carpet. Get a light color. The lighter the carpet, the bigger the room looks. I know, you may not want to live with a really nice light carpet because it could get dirty, but remember, this is for selling your house. So you gotta do it in the last minute. Now, a more expensive upgrade would be to get hardwood floors or LVP, which is a luxury vinyl product. So here's my take on that. If there are hardwood floors underneath a carpet, by all means, rip that carpet up and refinish those floors. I really do believe you will get your money back because the house will look so much more updated and really nice and pretty. You'll just wish you had done it a long time ago, but it is worth it. But if there isn't hardwood under the carpet, I would really just replace carpet with carpet, especially if this is a last minute fix. If you're a few years out, it may be worth it to price out a hardwood or an LVP now, so at least you have time to enjoy it. Here's an upgrade I would avoid. Do not get hardwood floors all over your house right before putting it on the market and expect to get your money out of it. It may help sell your house faster and probably for more money, but it's just not the best bang for your buck. A couple more things that you should do, and then we'll tackle some costly upgrades that you should definitely avoid. Grout, caulk, and roll. Go around to each of your bathrooms and check on the grout and the caulk. This is an easy fix, and you could probably do it yourself, or if not, you can hire a handyman. 
sometimes you're gonna see black marks on your grout or your caulk. Get one of those foam bleach cleaners, spray the foam on the marks, and then walk away. And if you come back a couple hours later and the grout and the caulk is all clean and it's in good condition, you're done. That's it, you've done everything. If you come back and there are still are black marks or you come back and the black marks are gone, but you can see the grout or the caulk is cracked, then you really should replace it or repair it. On to landscaping. Remember, this is the first thing that a potential buyer will see when they come to your house. So this is really important. Make sure you always put fresh mulch out right before you go on the market. It will just instantly brighten up the landscaping of your house. Also, make sure the trees are trimmed away from your house. No trees or leaves should actually be touching the house. This is a really hot button for inspectors, so if you don't do it, they'll for sure point it out. Make sure your deck and patios are all power washed and stained if needed. Speaking of power washing, don't forget your siding and your gutters. Once again, this is done right before you take your professional pictures of your house so everything looks at its best. This next one is not gonna cost you any money at all, but it's really important because it could potentially scare some buyers away. And that has to do with mice, rodents, ants, basically anything that moves except for your pets. Remember once upon a time you saw maybe a mouse or mouse droppings or some evidence of something. So you went and you got traps or you got those black triangle bait stations and you placed them around your house or even in your garage. Come on, don't judge me. You know you've done it. Or if not mice, maybe ants. Maybe you got those little ant hotels and you put them everywhere in every corner and underneath things. You've done one of these things. I know you have. Well, in my case, we actually had hornets and they had their nest in a hole right by a tree, right outside my garage, just waiting for us to walk by that nest every time. It was really actually scary. I had a client once who did such a great job getting his house ready for the market. It was a super cute house in Bethesda and it sold right away, but he forgot to check all the nooks and crannies for the different traps and evidence of mice around his house. And lo and behold, the inspector opened one of those little access panels and right there was a tiny little dead field mouse. He was like, <coughs> it was really kind of frightening. Now he was devastated because he really thought he messed up. But actually in this case, we offered the new buyer a one year warranty with a pest control center and they were fine and the deal went to settlement. But I can't imagine a scenario where it would freak a buyer out and they would simply walk. So do yourself a favor, walk through every room in your house, including your garage, and just do an inspection. Or better yet, if you had used a pest inspect company, have them come back out and go through your house and garage and just remove any evidence of mice or ants or basically anything. Make sure there's no ongoing issues, obviously, but you wanna remove all those traps and bait stations. You'll be happy you did, I promise you. Okay, we're at that time in the video you've all been waiting for, what upgrades should you avoid right before you put your house on the market? Let's start with your roof. If your roof is old, but it's not leaking, do not replace your roof right before you put your house on the market. You will most likely not get your money back. If it comes up in an inspection as it absolutely needs replacement, you can always deal with it then. If it just has stains on it, but it's still in good shape, you can actually clean your roof. They have companies that will come and specifically do that and remove those stains off the roof. If it's in good shape, it'll look great. And it's not a lot of money and well worth the rate of return. Replacing kitchen cabinets. This is a high price project and you will not get a great rate of return. Rather than replacing your kitchen and bathroom cabinets, if they are in decent shape, try painting them. But be careful who does the job. Make sure they have painted cabinets before because it's a little tricky. This is actually one of those cheap upgrades I mentioned at the beginning of the video. If the painted cabinets are done cheaply without somebody who has experience painting them, it could look really terrible and actually bring down your value. If they're done well, they actually look really good. Another way to give your kitchen a little facelift without breaking the bank 
is to replace the hardware on your cabinets, especially if you just painted them. You can buy them yourself online or just go to a Home Depot and then have a handyman install them. This will give the cabinets an updated look and it's well worth the money. Next upgrade to avoid would be replacing your windows. Windows are expensive. If they're not broken or stuck, just simply old, do not replace them right before you go on the market. Around here in the DC area, a lot of homes homes are built before 1979, so if you chose to replace your windows, you would have to hire a lead-based paint specialist to do the job, and that gets really, really expensive. If you have a few windows that are painted shut and you absolutely can't open them, just disclose and put as is for those windows when selling. It's just not worth replacing all the windows for a few stuck ones. Now, you have broken glass, you need to replace it. Nothing screams money to a buyer like seeing broken cracked glass. And it's not as expensive as a buyer thinks, so you're better off doing it yourself before going on the market. In fact, while we're on the subject of broken things, if something is broken, you should absolutely fix it. If a buyer walks around your home and sees a bunch of broken things, and it could be something as small as the knob on your closet, or maybe a broken doorbell, or even that cracked window, that buyer will immediately start discounting your house. First impressions are important, so if it's broken, fix it. Onto your systems, your HVAC, meaning your furnace, your AC, and your hot water heater. If they work, but they're just old, do not replace them. One thing you may consider if you're in a down market is to get a home warranty that will cover those appliances. This way, you're saying to the buyer, they work, but they're old, but guess what? We got you covered for a year, so don't worry. And I say a down market because if you're in a hot market, you may not need to even do that. You should get them serviced right before you go on the market. You should actually be getting them serviced once or twice a year for the duration of when you live in the house, but definitely right before you go on the market because a buyer and an inspector will always like to see that tag that has the recent service date right on it. The important thing to remember is they do work. Like I said before, if they're broken, you should absolutely fix them. And if you can't fix them, then you should replace them. These are big ticket items that really do make a difference to a buyer. Other big ticket items that sellers think they need to repair or replace, but they really don't, are paving driveways, removing trees, and remodeling bathrooms. I see this a lot, so let's just take them quickly one by one. First, we got driveways. If your driveway has severe cracks to the point where it will damage a car, Yes, you should fix it, but otherwise, you do not need to repave it. It may not be the prettiest driveway you've ever seen. You may actually hate it every time you come home, but it's just not worth the money that you put into it when you go to sell that house. I had a client once that insisted on repaving his driveway, and at the same time, he decided to paint his garage floor. I don't even think the new buyer paid any attention to it. They were more focused on the neighborhood and the schools, and they didn't even really look at the driveway, and especially not that garage floor. So so the moral to the story, consult your realtor before making such aesthetic changes. We could save you a lot of money. On to trees. Trees are expensive to remove, a lot more expensive than people think. So if you can trim the tree, you are much better off. Now, if the tree roots are impeding the house's foundation, well then you have much bigger issues. But if it's just an aesthetic thing and you don't like the tree, save your money. And finally, bathrooms. Remodeled bathrooms are lovely, especially especially the primary bathroom, but you will rarely get your money out of a newly remodeled bathroom when you go to sell. If you can enjoy it for a few years, by all means do it. But if it's just to sell, you're better off just cleaning it up, maybe painting the cabinets, maybe replacing the hardware. I've even seen some people redo the floor if you can put tile on top of the old tile rather than demoing it. Once you get into demoing the floor and replacing the vanities and replacing the showers, it's gonna cost you a lot of money if it's done right, and you're just not gonna get your money out of it when you go to sell. If you have any questions about anything I said in this video, just send me an email and we can chat. I've been doing this 20 years and I really do love to help people. And remember, every house is different. These are general ideas. You really should consult a professional that knows your neighborhood before making any changes to make sure that you're spending your money 
wisely. And if you missed my video on how to make your house look more expensive, definitely check that out next. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.